What you're looking at here is a tomato hornworm, which is a common pest found in gardens all across North America, where it can be found eating your tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and potatoes. Now if you found this pain in your garden, I assume your first thought would be to remove the little bastard and save your plants. However, you might want to reconsider that approach, because what if I told you that this little fella isn't alone and is actually a Trojan horse here to save your garden? Well, that's because this particular caterpillar is very unlucky and is currently resent to some parasitoid wasps. You see all those white growths on the caterpillar? Well, those are actually cocoons from a wasp. Now, a parasitoid is a type of parasitism in which the host will die from the parasite infection rather than just live with the parasite infection. And for these poor caterpillars, they're going to serve as breakfast, lunch, and dinner for wasp larvae. So the way this plays out is when a female wasp finds a caterpillar, she will inject approximately 150 eggs directly into the body of the caterpillar. Now, along with these eggs are some venom and an important virus. These eggs will then slowly develop, feeding on the caterpillar's blood, but not yet damaging the tissue of the caterpillar. In fact, the caterpillar continues on as if nothing is wrong, happily eating its way through your garden. It will be a beautiful butterfly, and then everything will be better. Now, the caterpillar will go on doing its normal business for about two weeks after the eggs have been planted. And now the wasp larvae have grown large enough that they will want to start emerging from the skin of the caterpillar and form these white cocoons that you see on the outside of the caterpillar. Now this is a dangerous time for the wasps. The caterpillar's immune system is on high alert and only about half the eggs will actually be able to successfully emerge and once that is done, they still have to worry about the caterpillar turning around and trying to eat them. However, these parasites have developed a clever way to deal with this problem. You see, about 24 hours before they emerge from the caterpillar, they will effectively turn off the host's ability to feed. In this 2017 paper, the author suggests that the wasp will actually purposefully overstimulate the immune response in the caterpillars during their emergence. Now, this is believed to suppress the host feeding behavior in a process that's known as illness-induced anorexia. They do this by releasing chemical signals that heighten the immune response while also suppressing the caterpillar's ability to eat and move, preventing it from destroying the wasps as they emerge from its backside. However, this immune response isn't the only factor at play. You see, when the mother wasp first laid her eggs inside the caterpillar, she also injected a virus into the caterpillar as well. You're guaranteed to catch a virus. This virus is believed to cause neurological changes in the caterpillar, working alongside the wasp larvae to completely shut down the movement and the feeding of the caterpillar, allowing the wasp to emerge while also being quite safe. Now, you might assume that the caterpillar is just paralyzed by this. However, it's actually not. See, this is where it gets really creepy. The caterpillar will actually continue to respond to threats, and it will actively protect the parasites growing on its back. And after about five days, the wasp will now leave their zombified protector, but the caterpillar will never return to normal. It will remain in the same spot until it eventually starves to death. From here, these wasps will leave their now caterpillar home and go find new mates, and then restart this life cycle, finding another caterpillar to predate upon. And by doing this, these caterpillars are, in a sense, protecting your garden. So the next time you see one of these caterpillars in your garden, decorated with these white cocoons, make sure to leave it alone because it's now helping you keep your garden safe from these pests and actually protecting your tomatoes where it used to be harmful. Now, if you found this topic interesting or gross or scary, please let me know in the comments as I'd love to hear. Also, while you're down there, please like and subscribe as it really helps this channel grow and I'm trying to really put out some good parasitology information. Thank you for the time and I hope you enjoyed the video.